Wow. And we're back. Yeah, that was a windy wallop, that, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Been saving that one up for you, pal. That was very resigned yeah. to the tedium of the next 30, 40, 50 minutes, whatever 50? it is. Do you think maybe, Andy, it would be a good idea to start the show for some other than a sigh? Just to make it feel like it's developing as a show, do you know what, what I mean? You mean that we've done over 40 shows now where I've sighed at the beginning yeah. of them? Yeah, you know what I'm getting at, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe no. next time. All right, well... I think um, there's something different. You've given a sigh, so it's my duty to assess it. Yes, please. Obviously. Um, what I was thinking, if this was a real good, fun podcast, yeah, that was thought through. Oh, imagine that. It, imagine that, right. They would have um, a jingle there, so I'll, I'll have to assess the sigh, and it would go, assess the sigh, don't be shy. As, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we could get Lenny Kravitz in. Yeah. Because I know Lenny. You do? Because he yeah. used to, he, he, do you know Screeding? The Kravitz Screeding. family are Screeders. Are they? Yeah. By it's trade. concrete finishing. And yeah. they did my swimming pool. Swimming right. pool. Not that I've got a swimming pool, Andy. I know you'll, uh, you'll jump down Just amend there. my notes for a bit later on. Because I was thinking, questions. He, yeah. he sings, I want to fly mm-hmm. to the sky. Mm-hmm. I want to fly high. Mm-hmm. Shall I tell you why? Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, it, it sounds simplistic. But, <laughs> but it's well, pretty I, deep. But like your swimming pool, Bob. So, ha 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 Funnily enough, Andy, the deep end of my swimming pool is very deep because I dive deep. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't do the, yeah. the I do a like vertical down. bang straight down, straight down the bottom. Yeah, like a torpedo. Yeah, you can discover new types of plant down there. I tell you, good lad. So I'll assess the, I'll assess it. With Lenny Kravitz or not, that was enough, Andy. That was enough to um, blow a lentil off a hard hat. You know, if the lads have been having um, falafel for lunch. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> Is it falafel? I think so. Um, but not, far, no. not powerful enough to cool down a hot wasp. Right. Right? Because wasps get hot just like us all, Andy. Yeah. Or to move a slice of lemon off a map. If the lemon, the bit of lemon was on the part of the map you wanted to I'm going to have to be going something to move a lemon. Yeah. One of my slices. Yeah, it can be done. It'd be a very thin slice, wouldn't it? What do you want to be called today, Andy? I'm going to give you a choice. What's my choices, Bob? First one is Renty Bumbles. <laughs> yep. Yeah? Oh, you know, you've Bumbles, laughed because right. it is a fun character. Yeah. I don't blame you laughing. Does he have an origin story? He's a book collector. Right. He wears corduroy, yeah? Yeah. And he once made love to a police frogman. Oh. Yeah. So he's a nice character, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Touch, touch, Peter. Right. What do you think? I'll take a little bit, two touches, then he peters out. Right. That's all the information I've got on him. <laughs> what do you reckon? I like right. him as well. Or, of course, the shit. It's a classic, isn't it? It's classic, the yeah. shit. The shit with tits. I'll just, I'll be the shit with tits. All right, all right, shit, It'll how are you, you doing? Feel better. Hey, I've got some names for you for once. Oh, great. Go on, then. Uh, you can be... I'm Ronnie Hot Instead of... Are you running your dog? No, I'm not. I'm, your I'm tongue. Funk, funky Steve. Your honky tug. Honky tug. You can be Curly Toes Watson. Don't want to be him. He wears those um, those slippers with the curly toes. Turkish slippers. About town Turkish slippers. Yeah. Dorothy Flex. No. No. Or Probe Tube 55. Um, uh, does it have to be 55? Yes, they? it's 55. Yeah. No, the I'll, others have all been taken up I think by other podcasts. Uh, honky Tug. Oh, fine. If that's all right. No, that's all right. Let's not bother with names next time. See, um, Andy, we've just done a little tour. It was a little tour, yes. Did you enjoy that? I really did. It was nice to get out of the house and see part of Northern Britain. Yeah? What was your favourite of the concerts? We'll call them concerts. I'm not going to say a favourite because that would um, upset and alienate the people who didn't come to the Well, they're all good. You can say that. The second one in Manchester. The second one in Manchester yeah, were best, wasn't it? Yeah. That were a good gig. Because them drunk ones were in. Do you know what a gig stands for? Well, you know what gig comes from? Is it short for something? It comes from something, yeah. Tell me what it is. It comes from God is good. No, you la- look at you laughing at me. I can't. Be- no, in the nineteen twenties, <laughs> if the jazz, if the um, black jazz musicians got a gig, they used to say God is good, and it got shortened. They used to say if they got a, a, a gig, if they got a concert, they'd say got a gig. Do you believe? I'm that? in front of la- of Google right now. Okay. You can't make we're literally in front of Google. I'm literally in front of it. I work for Google, but oh, I don't God, tell no one. It's correct, isn't it? It is. Yes, yeah, see. Oh my God. You learn something every day. Yeah, I hope yours fanny pack. 
That's what I'm going to call you. Listen, I've got some questions for you. All right, go on. From me um, blood relatives. Right here. Bob, as a millionaire in your mansion... I'm not a millionaire. ...with its panic room, its onion museum, and its (laughs) Lenny Kravitz screed uh, swimming pool... Yeah. ...where you like to dive deep, where do you keep your diamonds? I don't have any diamonds. I think they're... What, what's that word where... I think they're ga- garish. Do you know what's... Is there a word? Diamonds you know, they're are, flashy. Diamonds are beautiful. You like a diamond? You're thinking they're like rubies and... No, I don't sapphires. like diamonds, so I ain't got any diamonds. Diamonds are beautiful. I would never spend a penny No one on can it. argue against that. I like jet. Yeah, I like jet, blue, jet jo- blue Johnstone. Do, do, blue, do. blue Johnstone, I like. You get blue that in Johnson. near Stoke. All right, fair Johnson enough. Johnson Paint is the best not, paint. Oh, this isn't it, yeah. In it, though? Yeah. No messing about with that. Um, does every member of your millionaire family household have their own dressing gown? Or Let do me you think. Share? Let me think. Um, yes, we all have our own dressing gown. One each, or do you have a, an array of colours to I've choose got, from? I've uh, got... Well, I'm getting gold um, mm. pyjamas for my birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've ordered Silk. them. Luxury pajamas, yeah, because the wife got some white ones that look really luxurious. Uh-huh. And I didn't like that because I'm the boss of the house, aren't I? So you have important. to wear the gold pajamas. Yeah, so I've asked her. She said she gets some gold or silver ones. And how many dressing gowns have you got? Sorry, I've got uh, three dressing gowns. Okay, well, that's the hallmark of a millionaire, isn't it? Really? Excuse me, Andy. Is that that's meant to be entertaining? Finding out how many no, dressing it's gowns. No, genuine I've got. question. Yeah, but no. it's a genuine question, but you met, there is a responsibility to entertain people as well. I don't think there is. All right, fair it's enough. Third question. Oh, okay. Window cleaning, Bob. Yeah, big your fan. mansion. Yeah. Do you spray the windows yourself with a jet hose while dressed in your little fireman's outfit? Or do you get your slaves to wash your windows, denying them the use of a ladder and forcing them to form a human pyramid in order to reach the upstairs windows? I don't have any slaves, or so that do one's you? out. Just get new UPVC windows put in throughout the house every three weeks. Every three weeks? Every three weeks. Where do you think than, I live? Rather than wash them. Where do you, I live in a Cape of Good Hope or something. <laughs> I live on a ship. <laughs> I actually, um, we never clean the outside of our windows. Right. Um, the inside we clean with, you know, pss, 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 uh-huh. I don't know what you call that stuff. Mist, glass fly clean. spray. Yeah. No, not fly spray. Window spray. Right. And kitchen purple. So what about the outsides? Oh, no one does Whatever it. will be, will be, Andy. I don't know how you get a window cleaner. No one does. Right. The truth is, Andy, is because of the sheer size of my house, you'd yeah. have to get commercial window cleaners in, yeah? Mm-hmm. And I ain't paying that big money for that. Yeah, you could afford no, to. That's big money. You? you could afford to do it. You, I, I could afford You're to do anything I, want, to. anything I want to. It's the millionaire rumours coming back again. OK, that's the end of my questions, Bob. <laughs> Yeah, the um, EPL. And did you want to do EPL? Oh, that's a bit of EPL for me. What you got? I've got two Man United stories, funnily enough. Two? Yeah. Just do one of them. Well, would you like to do the fishing one or the tattooing one? Uh, fishing, I think. Right, I'll do tattoos then. Bastard. <laughs> So when I was in Manchester for the gig, right? Yeah. I had nothing to do, so I went to this really... Ex- hey, you know what? I used to live in Manchester. I used to live at a place called Hume. The right. Crescents in Hume, which was was some of the worst housing in Northern Britain. Well, because you really, moved in. No, I, I raised the standards, but it had wild <laughs> dogs. It had a pack of wild dogs living there. <laughs> right. Oh, absolutely truthfully. with a, a great and a great da- Yeah, and a great dame was the leader of this pack. And... um. They used to use. They had one shop in the middle of it. And when he came out, they used to attack you and take you, take stuff, your try and get stuff out of your carrier bag and that. But there was one bloke there, like sort of um, white rasta, you know, or tramp. Or I don't know quite what way he was coming from. And they never touched him or whatever. And I asked him. I said, "What's the secret? Right. What's the secret?" He said, "Look, next time they come to you, stand absolutely still, look just above their eyes, and say, Bian tiki, bian, bian." Tiki yeah. Bian. Yeah. Do you know what that means? I have no idea. So Can the next it? time they approached me, they sort of circle you a bit. I stared at the great day and said, Bian, Tiki, Bian. What happened? Right, came straight at me. <laughs> and, the, one, <laughs> and one of the other dogs 
took got got hold of me um, carrier bag and took away a big string of sausages. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> of course, it did. <laughs> so what? We, so we do, they, I went to a. Uh, tattoo parlour filled the day. You know when we were at Manchester yeah. doing the gigs. So I went down to Didsbury because that's where the really flash one is VIP one. You know what I mean? And I thought maybe I, I'd get a tattoo of a grumble weed. <laughs> yeah, you could nice have t- got a sleeve, a sleeve done of all of the grumble weeds. Well, I only had afternoon. I was just passing time, really, Andy. So I sit there. Um, the no- the noticed I was off the telly, so I went in the back room. I go straight in there. There is Wade. Where are Rudy? Marcus Rashford, Phil Jones, all having tattoos, all right. having a chat, and they're all complaining about I'm not making a big show of it, Andy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, good word day. Oh, I'm knackered. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I said, all oh, right, lads, you've had hard day training today then. And Wade says, we're all knackered because I have to... Give me a scouse, Andy. We're knackered because after have to train him. We had to visit some shithole community centre and pretend we gave one about their shitty drawings and fuck awful dancing. <laughs> Phil Jones, he tweets in. Charlie Williams. Uh, Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams. I were eat bored. I were eat bored. So I crept into the kitchen to see how the oven worked. I'm rate really keen on cooker mechanisms, especially <laughs> gas, though the electric induction systems are very pleasing too. Is that like, all right? That's great. I said, oh, that's nice. You got an interest, Phil. What, what cooker did they have? Oh, it was really pretty. Anyway, it was a five-ring green enamel Britannia with, with double oven, piezoelectric ignition, timer and delay function and separate griddle with removable drip tray. I had a really good fiddle with it, I could tell you. <laughs> Word. So, anyway, he's up. Philip left the gas rings on and was overcome with gas fumes and he lost consciousness. <laughs> So, we're having tattoos to cheer ourselves up. I said, all right, what are you getting, Wade? I'm getting a picture of Colleen next to a skip. I oh, said, so that that's a nice tattoo, isn't it? It's lovely. It's, well, probably she's peeping up out of off the side of it. Yeah. And it'll say for higher 500 yeah. weight or whatever. Yeah. That's not a nice tattoo, isn't it? I said, what about you, Philip? He says, yeah, I'm not getting one. As as my mum says, it might stop me getting another job when Marino gave me the boot. <laughs> Something like that. At this point, Zlatan strides in from a back separate room. Uh-oh. Naked from his waist down, right? Yeah. Wayne says, what shadow did you get, Zlatan? Zlatan turns round to face them, his arse facing them, touches his toes with his nose. Yeah. He's got a big G on one cheek and a big D on the other. <laughs> Philip says... Really, I don't understand it. That was Asian. It's going to be Indian, yeah. That there, Asian. yeah. Charlie, right, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Williams. Williams. Really, I don't understand it. Is it your dog's initials? <laughs> Zlatan says, "No, come wipe Zlatan's anus, then you will see." So they kneel down and gently open his cheeks, yeah, <laughs> so that they can work on his anus, and it all becomes clear. If you God. think about it, G. Oh, yeah. Using sort of like using the anus as the O. Uh, like anal hieroglyphics. Yeah, almost. that kind of thing. Yeah. Zlatan says, You see now? Where he says, Yeah, with your hole it spells God. Correct. Now wipe Zlatan till it sparkles. <laughs> yeah? And that's kind of my story. Do you wish you'd chosen the uh, the fishing one? I did choose the fishing one, Bob. Oh, you did actually. I did, didn't you? you? Yeah, you in poo-pooed fairness, that. You did. Right, I'm thinking of starting a new club. You've got a choice, and I'll work on whichever one you like best, right? A new club? A new club, yeah. First club I'm, I'm suggesting is the Cat Stevens Club, yeah? Yeah. So we get together, I'm going to say once a fortnight, mm-hmm. we listen to, like, Tea for the Tillerman, some good old Cat Stevens stuff, and read the Quran, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's one club. I'm liking it. Yeah. There's the Partridge Club, I don't know, so, but the Partridge Club is like we draw them... We eat, you know, we have, I eat partridge, we draw partridges. Mm. We could, you know what I mean? We just, everything, it's not very good, is it? Shite. Shite, sorry. There's the Transistor Radio Club, right? I like that. We buy all trannies, yeah. transistors, yeah. yeah, and hold them to our um, ears and just, like, kind of walk around town. Snapping your fingers. Snapping the fingers. And Any um, transistor repair or I don't restoration know why, involved? No, I don't know why you've introduced that side of things. It's just trying to widen it out a bit. It's not a business. It's a leisure. You know, I'm not repairing right, transistor. <laughs> so, are you, are you interested in any of those clubs? If so, I'll work on them. If not, I won't. Um, I'd like the Cat Stevens one. 
<laughs> so we'll start that. at Cat's Table. It sounds spot. good. Nice for the summer. Right, I'll buy tea for the Tillerman. Right. I'll buy that one. Start, we'll listen to it? that one. I want to do yes, no with you. Yeah. But imagine there's a door over there, an imaginary door, and yeah. imagine behind the door is the things I'm going to ask you. Right. So if you would actually go through the door to see this... Yes or no? You physically want me to? No, the, oh, right. no not that door. Okay. Imaginary door next Perhaps to it. Perhaps it'll all become clear when you when you set right, time. Right, imagine yeah. behind the door yeah. is a cheese pasty with a firework stuck in it. Yes. Would you go through the door to look at that? I, I, I'd already have gone, yeah. Yes. The Crankies, but on their day off. No, I'm not interested. Okay. Papa Doc Duvalier's septic testicle. <laughs> I wouldn't be... I'd, I'd rather see the pasty... Right, really? Yeah, he's Haitian dictator, isn't yes. he? Yes. I've always been a bit fascinated with him. Hints of witch doctor There's all of that going on, yeah. Yeah. How did his testicle get so septic? Probably would be a curse or something, wouldn't it? But you can go through the door and have a look, would you? No, I'll tell you what I want. I want Bubba. Really? No, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. All right, one out of three then. Okay. But, hey, but thanks for giving us the uh, uh, the chance. <laughs> will you sing us? Will you? You've got your... Um, what's that badge you're wearing, Andy? Sing, up, a, sing a songwriter. No, it says up yours, <laughs> Delors. <laughs> what yeah. are you trying to say? Oh, it's ironic, is it? It's Brexit, Brexit irony. Brexit irony. Um, I've done a song. Go on. Then. I've been in the studio and done one. Yeah. It's like a back and track. It's a little bit like craft work, but it's a bit like Sleaford Mods as well. Right. I don't know the and Sleaford it, Mods. And it's, but... it, what I'm trying to do is a bit of social commentary. Go on then. And it's sort of like about drones because hey. they're everywhere now, aren't they? Yeah, hey, I have, hope maybe things listen, will change after and, this then. And please just be as brutally honest as you can. Drones everywhere you go. Sometimes three, sometimes four. Drones Drones Moving round on rocks the clouds As it ever coming down Bloody drones Cook, 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 cook ability That's a beauty of gas There you go. What do you think about You're that? You're right, please, with that. Yeah, it took me three days, that. It is a bit craft work. Isn't it? Yeah. You nicked the cookability bit, though. Well, you know what? I dropped that in because I thought I could pitch it to British Gas and they might want to use it as an advert. No, the funniest line in it was maybe three, maybe four. Yeah. Yeah? But you didn't have enough confidence, so you thought you needed to put a funny line on the end. Isn't that the correct? Isn't that, I put it, isn't that correct, Mr Dawson? No, I want to try and flog it to British Gas for an advert. I, the British Gas don't exist anymore. It's Centrica. OK? Have you got the number? I'm sure I can get it for you. <laughs> Are you watching any telly at the moment, Andy? Not right now. I'm here talking to you. Oh, yeah. No, good one. No, yeah. <laughs> the, um, I just want to... I think I might try and introduce it as a new feature. Yeah. Right, just some recommendations. Have you watched The Start-Up with Martin Freeman, The Hobbit? No. <laughs> that, that's really good. But I, 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 I wanted to broadcast it because the first episode is really difficult. What's it on? Is it BBC, Netflix? I think What's I saw it on Amazon. Right. And um, it's really difficult because you get it a lot with the American ones now is that um, they want to do a thing at the beginning to say, look, there, you potentially might see nudity in this. So they like, like they want to make the statement, hey, this has got nudity in it. Right. There isn't any nudity in Oh, well, I'm not going to watch it. But it's, it's really randy, the first one, and Martin Freeman's got... He's a... rubbing himself against stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a dustpan and brush. <laughs> the, um, Martin Freeman's accent's a bit odd, and I'm, I've spoken to so many people who've abandoned it after one. You make it sound really good. Oh, no, but really it's great. Enticing. Um, right. I always recommend the film Barbara, the East German film Barbara from 2012. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's the best film I've ever seen. <laughs> Have I got to Google this again? It's a honest. Uh, Here we go. It's a it, it's a perfect bit of cinema, um, but I can see you're not interested in this new section of the show. <laughs> oh yeah, it's true. East German, two thousand twelve. It's fantastic, oh, she looks nice. Andy. Fantastic. Anyway, she's pretty. 
Hey, 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 have you ever noticed, right? Have you noticed, though, right? You buy lottery tickets for the family and you have to rub off all the windows because you're the wanker with the brass hands. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yes. Have you ever noticed, yeah? Yeah? Have you ever noticed how bothersome wasps are at a picnic? You know, you swat one away and your brass hand flies off into the Garden of Remembrance. <laughs> you notice that? Have you noticed that? <laughs> uh. Have you ever noticed? Oh, do you remember? Do you remember tin beef burgers? Yes. You had to hook them out with your brass hand. So they always tasted a piece of my brass hand wax. <laughs> I've got one more. Do you want me to do one? Please not? indulge yourself. Go on. Have you ever noticed in service station toilets those big round dispensers for the bog roll, right? Yeah. And you can't find the end of it, so you stick your brass hand in. Yeah. And it gets stuck. So you have to phone up Pearson's headquarters to send an operative out to release you. <laughs> have you ever, ever noticed that, Andrew? Yes. Yes. Have you finished? Yeah. I'm uh, one of the ambassadors for the Sunderland City of Culture 2021 bit, right. which has gone in today. Yeah. Right. What's it based on? Biggest K- KFC in the well, country. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. Now what you've I got a roundabout. I've got you? a bit of a song to go along with another it. song. Yeah. You know when the Istanbul song that we don't do anymore. Cause it's a bit All racist. right. Yeah. If you could do, do that bit where you go, Sunderland. You ready? And I'll do the bit. Yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. Sunderland. Pigs in blankets. Sunderland. Moonwalking. Sunderland. Lotto rollover. Ha! <laughs> Sunderland. Sega Mega Drive. Sunderland. Bi weekly recycling. Sunderland. The top 40. Sunderland. That's, it, that's all of it. All right, and that's to sell the city of that, culture. That'll get the get the city of culture. Well, I think you've kickstarted it there. I think it's a weird, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you've been doing all these songs. Yeah. I'm going to do one. Will you, have you? Have you it's got a your, song special? Have you got your keyboard there? Well, yeah, of course. Because I've got a blank area with no. Um, I haven't got any words for it, so you'll have to fill it in with your synth. Yeah. Right. Uh, sort of a middle eight. Yeah. Okay. So you'll play your synth, right? I'll give you yeah. a nod. Right. Right. Okay. Here we go. Slender people fit through gaps. Slender men look great in fucking slacks. Slender women can kick you in the head. Slender people take less room up in bed. Go, Andy! Nice. You're good. Thank you very much. One hand as well. Oh, thank you, Andy. Was oh, that it? I didn't have any words for oh, the end, so I had to be sent. Second, second verse. Thank you. Hey, I went to Bournemouth. You know, I went to Bournemouth match, Andy. With Young Borough got a beat oh, by Bournemouth four nil. Yeah. Oh God, we got bad. Well, I went out. Um, I left it half time. I have never ever done that in my life. Did you I really? Left, I left it. I couldn't. It's just too sad. It was too sad to watch. So it, it's at the Vitality Stadium. A yeah. big car park. Is it really? It's very good for visiting supporters. Anyway, yeah. And Callum Wilson was out at the back there. Callum Wilson. Is that what he's called? I think so. Callum Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> he's round the back, and they've got a little practicing area, astroturf with goalposts and that. Yeah. Yeah. And he was practicing his diving. Yeah. And teaching some, <laughs> teaching some um, of the Bournemouth school children how to dive. Yeah. You know. Um, Does he dive deep? So I was just I was just watching. Then Adama Traore came out, yeah, mm-hmm. with a can of Red Bull and some jelly snakes, you know, to give right. him a bit. Of, you know, like well, you can tell that's what what he's on, can't you? So it's amazing watching. He dribbled past me, right? Then he dribbled past a couple of the kids. Then he dribbled past me. Then he dribbled right past Callum, then past the security bloke, then past Callum again, then runs towards the goal <laughs> and blasts it into the delivery bay of Asda next door. <laughs> so, as you can see, Andy, it was just really a little joke story. Is that the end of it? Yeah, it was a joke. I was just trying to... I suppose it was observation comedy. I was saying, have you ever noticed how Callum Wilson dives every t- all the time? Yeah. And have you ever noticed how Adam yeah. Traore beats loads of people and yeah. then does nothing with it? I'll probably just edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, Alderman, or have you got something? Do your Alderman. All right. Go on. I was not going to do any other Aldermans, you know. I know, but you wrote one for the live show, but it wasn't good enough to put in the live show, so you're going to do it now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, says the man who gives us a tat advert. Oh, we've just had, we've had some, some players spotted that have come in. Yeah? No, I'll do them later on. No, go on, do your Alderman. I was staying at a hotel near Stockton. I was, up, I was up there opening a little, I think it was a play out for the daft kids, you know, with their half-baked, flaky parents, you know, yeah. can't, like, get it together. Um, I had nothing to do till the evening, so I was in quite a nice hotel. I went down to a basement pool. So that's nice, isn't it, Andy? Yes. I'm having a basement pool. Did you go in the pool? Did you dive, yeah, so I went in the pool. As, as the, there was no one in there when I went down there. Just that lovely smell, and it was quiet. Then I saw in the shallow end, stood up was Biffy Clyro. And he was, like, drawing on his face. He was drawing waves, so I thought, that's nice, he's got a nice theme. You shouldn't be allowed to take a pen in the shallow end. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not going to say Biffy it. Biffy Clyro, though, Biffy isn't it? Biffy Clyro, isn't it? rock star. So um, I did a few wits, yeah, yeah. doing me paddle because of my bad shoulder that you haven't asked about. Yeah? You're not... No, I'll ask about it now, I'll edit in earlier on. How's your shoulder, Bob? Um, shoulder's not great. I wish oh, I'd never had it done, to be honest mate, with you. Jesus. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Um... If I've got any tablets, I'll give you some tablets. Yeah, what general right. tablets? Yeah. Hang do you on. know when I was a kid, you used to go at the doctors. Do, yeah. do you remember that? If you got the doctor, you used to give you linctus. Now here we are. Here's some tablets. They've got a bit of um, cotton wool in the top. Yeah. Also, oh, they're important tablets. Yeah. Did you get them on the internet? Yeah. Are they are they are they to help you get a rise on? The oh, blue. Haven't you got any? Just have ten of them. Haven't you got any tablets that would dissolve your tit fat? I've. <sighs> I'm just I'm I trying you, to help you. I think you can get such a thing. I'm trying know. to cure you. I think you get the shits if you have them, but because the fat. Just have ten of them. Sure. Anyway, Biffy Clyde, I did a couple of lengths. I'll edit that right. bit in the beginning about your shoulder and make it sound like I give a fuck. All right, if you would. Right, carry it'll on. It'll put the story you in a better light, don't it? I know you couldn't I'm get a fuck. Do the story. Anyway, I'm halfway across um, one of my wits and I feel like a little tug on my trunks. Then oh. another little tug. And then I grab my trunks to keep them up, but of course that means I put both arms down. I start to sink a bit. And as soon as I let go, there's another little tug. And before you know it, my trunks are off, yeah? So I quickly swim to the deep end, you know, just to, like, get my act together kind of thing. And then, But I look up and I notice the pool's completely empty. No yeah. one there. Nobody there. Hello. Hey, already, Andy, this is a little bit like that movie Cocoon, isn't it? Yeah. No, do you know what I mean? I'm wondering where it's going. Yeah. Well, I think, look, I've got nothing on. I'd better get out of here quick before a lady comes in. You know what I mean? So I sprint into the changing rooms. That, thank God they're empty. I open my locker, right? And shit, my clothes have gone. So that's not very nice, is it, Andy? No. Then I hear a very familiar voice. <laughs> you lost something, Robert. You look in a bit of a pickle, Robert, don't you, Robert? It's the older man stood there with a towel around his middle. He's just come out of the shower. It's interesting, Andy, because his shoulder hair is all stood up on end, yeah? Yeah. And in the back, it's surrounded by the steam in the background from the shower yeah. um, on his massive back. And you know what I thought? It looked to me a bit like the aftermath of a Greek forest fire. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I cover up... Or first, I should say, I cover up my privates with my thumb, yeah? Yeah. Um, I said, yes, some joker's nicked me trunks in the pool and my clothes have been nicked from me locker. Oh, dear, Robert, you are in a bind, Robert. Then I see he's got an apricot in his hand, yeah? Ooh. He says, here, take this apricot, Robert, to help you cover up. I can still see the edge of your foreskin, Robert. <laughs> so he throws it and I catch it and I use the, I use the apricot in, con- in conjunction with my thumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? The area in cover the area. Cover the area. Yeah. Um, suddenly the aircon gets turned on. I begin to shiver a bit, you know, it yeah. gets cold. Oh dear, Robert, you're shivering like a little baby seagull, Robert, that slipped down the roof tiles into a frozen downpipe, Robert. Here, take my towel, Robert. He throws me his towel and he just stands there nude, right? And Andy, he's got a huge circular bush. Jesus. No, massive. About yeah. that, bigger than the opening of a bucket. Big circle of, of pubes, yeah? And you know it, what it looks like? It looks like he sat on the shoulders of that little bloke from Diversity. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where. Look, Andy. Anyway, then I see the town clerk. The town clerk, the vicar, and Biffy come, come round from behind the lockers. Town clerk's got me clothes. They start to chant, kiss the alderman, kiss the alderman, kiss the alderman. Well, Andy, I have never kissed him naked. 
It's the first time for everything, Yeah, Bob. so I don't mind telling you, I didn't hesitate at all, to be honest. You like trying new things, don't you? So I didn't want to look like a slag, but I'll write up for it. <laughs> so he just sucked, like, my lips onto his, and then he seemed to like, sort of count each of my teeth individually with his tongue, yeah. right? Yeah. And I couldn't help it. I grabbed hold of his bush and like, I twisted a handful of it and it came out of my fist. And yeah. then we just slipped apart as my my mouth filled with his spittles and it, we, we just sort of slipped apart. Yeah. And it was over. Beautiful. Um, Clark gave me my clothes back. And I have to say, Andy, I'll tell you the truth, I kept that handful of hair yeah. from the alderman's bush. I wove it into a little broomstick yeah. and I've hung it from the... The, the rear mirror in the car. So oh, well, I hope that brings, you look. Hope that brings you luck while you're driving. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, 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 it's Barry Homeowner here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, I got one of those kerchers, you know, for car washing, patio cleaning. Yeah. I got all the accessories, Andy. Jet wash, yeah. Yeah, it's a jet washer. It's bright yellow yeah. and it's brightened up my life, right? It cleans the grout, the concrete, glass. Next door, Andy, right? Yeah. It's got a bucket and a mop. A fucking, <laughs> fucking renter. Renter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, ding yeah. dong, landlord. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Ding dong, landlord here. Get out of my house. I'm selling it to a real man who can afford a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a smart meter this week. Um, yeah, it lets me constantly monitor my consumption. Yeah. Um, it's a service that isn't available to a renter, obviously. No, 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 we, ding dong, landlord that. here. I'm giving you one month's notice that you're a wife. <laughs> <laughs> who can't afford a mortgage. <laughs> yeah, bloody good, isn't it? Um, Listen, you know, halogen bulbs? Yeah, yeah. You know, super efficient. No, they're not, though. Really? They'd, you'd assume they were energy efficient. You'd assume it. Yeah, yeah, I did, you? I did, yeah. But no. I mean, I'm tempted to pull them all out and, I don't know, send them down the food bank or something. Yeah, yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck who? Renters! Fu- Renters! <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I got a new ISA this year, tax yeah. efficient shell for Mercedes. Did you go the forums and research it? Yeah, just yeah. went straight to the forum, says yeah. best ISA, pick yeah. an ISA. It's yeah. a tax sort of shell for your savings and investments. Yeah. The interest alone actually keeps me in lasagna um, for the whole year. It's a peach of a system. Beautiful. Imagine giving half your income. Honestly, Andy, giving half your income to a landlord, <laughs> I I mean, you it. might as well just throw it in a big fire. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then put the fire out with your jet washer. Yeah, ding dong, landlord here. <laughs> I want to inspect your bedding for tears. You renters tend to cry most at night when I'm at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's kind of like what... Oh, are you watching the, the island with Bear Gorillas, though? No, I'm not watching oh, that either. Should oh, I be watching good, that? Yeah, I he's a nobed. We, uh, is that, he's a Christian, isn't he? Is he? Oh, yeah. well, I'll take that back then. He's, he's a Christian who flies everywhere by a helicopter. Right. Can we just go over to the Sacred Soccer Soap because there's been a lot of Can talk. I can have a guess who it is? At the end, after you've heard it, there's been a lot of talk about gambling yeah. in football this week with yeah. Joey Barton and that, so the Sacred Soccer Superstars lifted the lid on gambling in football. Here we go. The issue of football is doing gambling has reared its head in the news recently, but outsiders have got no idea just how addicted to betting many of the top, top, top footballers really are. I used to play for one of the biggest clubs in the land, and every Tuesday afternoon the lads would get together in a barn about 15 miles into the deep dark wood and spent hours doing gambling until dawn or beyond. A local bookmaker would set it up, and all of the top betting events would be laid on for us. Roulette, pontoon, Channel 4 racing videos, rock, paper, scissors, even pin the tail on the donkey. Everyone was usually well behaved, but now and again, one of the lads would get carried away, throwing good money after bad, and ending up losing an absolute bundle. I once looked on in amazement as a very high-profile England fullback chucked away 90 grand on a sword fight between two naked midgets that had been covered from head to toe in spry, crisp and dry. And when I say swords, what I really mean is, (laughs) well, you can probably work it out. Great, great times. 
Oh, ah, well, that is interesting. And can I have a little guess uh, who it is? Do. Is do you, there was a Sunderland player? Was he called Pickford or Pickering or Nick Pickering? Nick, is it Nick Pickering? No, it's not Nick Pickering. <laughs> Thought it might be. Nick can Pickering. I just mention at this point that the Secret Soccer Superstar and the Alderman? Yeah. And stuff like that is in the new Athletic Go Mince book that's coming out in a it, few weeks. Is it shit, the book? I've it's never seen it. It's pretty shit, yeah. It's mostly my stuff and stuff you've said on the podcast. All right, yo. Yeah, pile of shit. Available <laughs> from all good book retailers from May the 18th. Um, well, I'll tell you why, Andy, I had a picnic last night. You know, the bar. The bar. The bar. Yeah. It's so easily overlooked, isn't it? Don't you find? Still did them. It doesn't shout out like, no. and it's a delicious bar. It really is. Maybe we can do something with the picnic people. I'll, I'll write a song for the picnic people All next right. week. Yeah, like that British gas one I did earlier. So, shall we go to the island? Yeah, I mean, off with that. it's a bit long, Andy. I know they always are. Well, are we used to it now? Okay. Young Thomas McClough lived on the island position nearest to the Laird's Domain and the Western Isles. Separated by the sea, but not beyond the spying eye of his telescope, purchased from the now defunct Comet Superstore on the mainland. So it's a nice start, isn't it, Andy? It's something. So he's spying on the island with his telescope. Oh, is that what it meant? Thomas would spend hours of daylight gazing upon the Laird's Island from his bedroom window. He would watch the delivery of provisions by boat every Thursday, roll notes, oatmeal, oaty drinks. Oats so simple. And Rickstein salt and pepper oat cakes, especially for the laird. Yeah, so the delivery, he watches them doing the deliveries. Okay. The mainland crew would bow their heads as the goods were taken and not step foot on the aisle. A swift exit was always made. <laughs> But on every other day, his attention was firmly fixed on Mallet Cove. For there, every day, a lassie would appear at 10 a.m., accompanied by a man in a cloak and mask, and sit on her own reading till the man returned to fetch her at sundown. The lassie was a total beauty. <laughs> Thomas likened her to a perfect combination of the Australian Minogue sisters. She had the dark, long, silky hair of the sister Danny, but no the ugly face. <laughs> the arms and legs of Kylie, but without the thick hairs that blighted Danny's limbs. She had the thin, delicate feet of Sister Danny, but without the extra toe and half thumb on top. But in one important respect, she bore resemblance to both sisters, in that she had plenty tit to spare. It was this abundance of surplus tit that inspired Thomas to paint, and he would spend most of his evenings painting buns and hillocks on canvas. <laughs> then he hatched a plan, and the next Thursday early in the morn, he slipped under a tarpaulin on the delivery boat and lay quite still, clutching a box of mellow bird's coffee. On arriving at the aisle, he swam to Mullet Cove, where he knew his sweetheart would be waiting. She was seated in her usual spot and beckoned him with her index finger. Thankfully, the finger was a replica Kylie and not the wizened, what infected digit of the sister Danny. <laughs> Their eyes locked on each other's like a space probe might lock onto a larger exploratory craft. Thomas immediately felt a rumpus along the length of his personal pipe and covered the area with the mellow bird's package. How do you do, madam, said Thomas. The lady replied, sadly in the voice, to, the voice of Sister Danny, Not bad, mate. But you said You said a fucked. At that moment, Thomas noticed a long chain attached to her foot that bound her to a nearby post. How do you mean, young lady, and why are your chains so... I am but a lure to attract young men to the island so they may be slaughtered to provide meat for the laird. Talak will be here shortly to dispose of you. And what's in your package? That's a large tin of mellow birds. It was a gift for you from the mainland. It truly is the world's most gentle and mellow drink. And at that, Talak appeared over the brow, brandishing a blade fashioned from the side panel of a lambretta that had fallen out of the sky many summers ago. But it was not the blade that did for Thomas, no. He died instantly when Talak removed the hood from his head, for he had the face 
of Diane Abbott. The face of Diane Abbott. The face of Diane Abbott. <laughs> so there oh, you go. There we are. And that's that's all we've got time for for this week. But we'll be back. We'll be back soon, won't we? Yeah, it's can I just say, this. if you've been listening mm-hmm. very carefully to the podcast, yeah. you might want to start wondering about this um, Lambretta. It might be the ah. key to the way off the island. Right, so people, to, might, go people back might want to have a little bit of think about Every that, other episode we've done. For that day when the Lambretta fell from the sky. Clever. All right, then. All right, Thanks, see you, Andy. Say bye. 